Today I'm shouting out some of my sweet friends. Each of my three projects were inspired by one of these three ladies. Annie of Crafting with Auntie Annie Jones, Tammy of The Rustled Willow, and C of CJ DIY. They're all always sources of inspiration for me, and they're all super talented and absolute sweethearts. So welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Annie is my first muse, so let's get into it. A few weeks ago, Annie made this darling teacup project. That's my jumping off point. I have here a big teacup and a dessert plate. Both are from the Dollar Tree. I had these in my stash, but I know that the Dollar Tree still has them. So I used my silhouette to cut some vinyl diamonds and I placed them around the plate and also around the cup. I'm going to spray paint the bottom of the plate and the inside of the cup with black spray paint. Then I'll do the other sides with white. Okay, so we're out back and I'm gonna start by painting the inside and the bottom with the black spray paint. This is like bumper and trim spray paint that I picked up at Home Depot for a couple of bucks. And just as I started with the white spray paint, my battery died. Sorry about that, but you get the idea. So my next issue was that when I was peeling off the vinyl, the white paint began to peel with it. Ugh. It wasn't too bad on the cup as long as I took my time. Now, I've done this before and I didn't have this problem, so I don't know, maybe it was the brand of spray paint, I'm not really sure. The plate was a bit more difficult and it did get a bit jacked up, but I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go with it. I want this to have a vintage flavor. So, I'm running with it. I just took my time peeling off the rest of the vinyl diamonds. I decided to add some black ink to distress it a wee bit. You know, take advantage of the less than perfect appearance. So, I'm just going to use a cosmetic sponge and kind of dab the ink around the edges of the plate. And then I'll do that inside little well of the plate as well. There was a little overspray of black spray paint on the cup handle, which I'm digging. So I'm going to try to mimic that with the ink like I did on the plate. Not going crazy, just adding a wee bit here and there. I'm going to fill the cup with scraps of styrofoam that I had laying around. And I'm just going to fill the top with some Dollar Tree moss. I'm not going to glue it because I'll be reusing these items, I'm sure. So this is good enough. So I printed out a tag on white cardstock that reads Happy Easter. And I'm using the sponge and the ink to distress the edges. You know, as you do. Because I want to be able to reuse these items, instead of gluing these adorable wee bunnies in place, what I'll do is fill the wee holes on the bottom with magic or model magic clay, which will allow me to use skewers to attach them to the styrofoam. I'm going to add this cute little buffalo check or gingham black and white bow to the tag. And then I'll glue it to a skewer so that I'll be able to push it down into the styrofoam. I add a bit of that ribbon over the skewer just for some extra support and it makes it look a little nicer. And I'm just going to push the skewer in the back of the cup there. I've cut another skewer down to three pieces and I'll push them into the clay inside the bunnies and then into the styrofoam. I'll add some of these sweet wee paper roses to the front. I'm keeping it simple and pretty. Also, this will be great because I can reuse all of these pieces. Here's another look at the inspiration piece by Annie. And here's my spin on it. 
You'll find a link to Annie's channel as well as a link to the video that inspired me in the description box below. Thanks, Annie. I saw this project in one of Tammy's spring videos from last year. This one is probably the closest to the original of my three. With my scroll saw, I cut an X shape from MDF and I'm going to give it two coats of white acrylic paint to start. I'm also going to give the back two coats of black. I went into Photoshop and created my own version of the mixed media print that Tammy used on her egg. I printed it on a regular sheet of standard paper and I sprayed it with clear matte sealer. You'll want to do this if you have an inkjet printer because the Mod Podge will smear the ink otherwise. I'll give the egg a healthy coat of Mod Podge and then I'll just apply the paper to the egg. Now, I want some wrinkles, so I'm just going to use my hands to burnish it. And then I'm creasing the edges to make it easier to pull away that extra paper. I'll add a layer of Mod Podge to the top. Once I have a nice coat, I'm going to set it aside to dry for a couple minutes. To remove the excess paper, I dip a paintbrush in water and I'm going to brush right along the edge there and carefully tear it away. I use my sanding block in a downward motion to knock off any of that stray paper that's still hanging around. I just got some of this Jolie black wax and I've been itching to try it. So what I'm going to do is brush some of it along the edges and lightly brush over the surface to catch in some of the wrinkles. I'm going in lightly at first, just to get an idea of how it applies. So far it's pretty nice, I think. Glides on easily. And I'm using a clean rag to wipe it back a wee bit. And I keep doing this until I get it just how I like it. To embellish, I'll make a bow with this pretty striped ribbon. It's just going to be a simple two-loop bow. So I'll make my loop, pinch it in the center. I'll make the second loop pinch it in the middle, and then I'll twist it off with my pipe cleaner. I'll dovetail the ends and hit them with my lighter. Keeps them from fraying. I'll cut off that excess pipe cleaner and I'll use some hot glue to attach it to the top of the egg. And I think I'll glue this jeweled heart to the center of the bow. Add a dash of glam. I have a couple of those Dollar Tree cubes. I painted them black. I'm just going to glue them onto the back of my egg as a stand, and we're done. Here's another look at Tammy's inspiration piece. And here's my spin on it. You'll find a link to Tammy's channel as well as a link to the video that inspired me in the description box. Thanks, Tammy. My final piece was inspired by one of C's recent projects. Hers is a bee, mine's a bunny. It's a quick one. I had this Dollar Tree round on hand. Looks like I started something based on the partial paint job. 
Anyway, I'm going to give it two coats of fresh wheat paint. This is one of their 10 inch rounds. I created my design in Silhouette Studio and cut it from matte black vinyl. I attempted to get it centered. That didn't quite work out. That's okay. It's wonky, but I'm wonky. So I applied it. I did try to recenter it, but it was well stuck. There was like static. So as it got close to the round, it was like a magnet. Anyway, I get it attached. And I'll tell you what, getting the transfer tape off was tougher than expected. The vinyl stayed no problem, but that tape wanted to stay. It was a fight. Finally, I got it off. Yeah, it's more of center than I would have liked. I'll make it work. I'm adding stripes or checks, whichever you prefer. What I do is paint my first stroke equal distance apart. So top and bottom and then both sides. And then I'll add a stroke in the center between the two points and so on. Generally speaking, this works much better when the border is even, but like I said, we'll make it work. So I'm just gonna do this until it's all filled in. All of my stripes or checks are painted in, and now I'm just going to add some of that black wax. Just like before, I'm hitting the edges, and then I'll dust it lightly over the whole thing. When I'm happy with it, I'll spray it with clear matte sealer. Here's a look at C's inspiration piece again. And here's my twist on it. So what I did is added magnets to the back of it. And I stuck it to my pizza pan project that I made last year, year before. I'll link it below too, in case you're interested. So C's sign was black and white. And I wanted to make an Easter sign for my pizza pan. They both had beads. They're both black and white. That's where the connection and the inspiration came from. Here's a final look at all the inspiration projects. And a final look at all of my projects. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I've really had fun making all of these projects. Don't forget, check out Annie, Tammy, and C's channels, as well as the videos that inspired my pieces today. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.